Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jonathan here with another video and today we're going to be looking at a Vectorworks AI visualizer for our second time. So I got inspired by a fellow YouTuber, Adam Z from LearnArchViz on his epic recreation of Minas Tirith from Lord of the Rings using Unreal Engine. And I wanted to see how this would play out using Vectorworks and Twinmotion and just for fun what I could do with it. Thanks for watching everybody, enjoy the video. Okay, so let's get started with the video. As I said, Adam Z from LearnArchViz is a fellow YouTuber that I've been following for a while. Absolutely love his work, so hands up to this dude for creating just the most amazing content. Now, if you're inspired by Lord of the Rings, you'll know what I mean when you watch this video. It was epic. So what I did, I basically purchased his Minas Tirith model for a very reasonable uh, $5, I think it was. And I wanted to see how I could actually work with this in Vectorworks. Now, Vectorworks can't import FBX files directly, which I thought was the best file format. So what I did, I used Transmuter, which is an amazing bit of software by Lindale Software, where you can basically import FBX files. And as you can see, I've got the file now in the Transmuter software. All I need to do then is just sort of make sure it's come in the right way. Sometimes you need to flip the Z value and so on as well. And um, while you've got it in this software, you can also play around with the sort of number of polygons and things like that to get a bit of simplification. And finally, um, when you're ready, you can actually then transmute. Now what that does, it saves it to SketchUp format. So Transmuter is absolutely amazing for any SketchUp users because it imports any files and converts them to SketchUp. Now, I am an affiliate for uh, Lindale, so if you would like to get Transmuter, please use my affiliate link in the description. But you can see it's got a really nice model of Minas Tirith here, and with a bit of simplification, we can kind of reduce the file size a little bit more as well. So why am I doing this? Well, the reason I'm basically going ahead with uh, the simplification process in Transmuter is really so I can generate an effective SketchUp file that then I can import into my favorite design software, Vectorworks, of course. So we're ready to click the transmute button. All I need to do then is save the file in the SketchUp file format. And it takes a few seconds to generate that. And then I'll be able to either import that directly into SketchUp or import it into Vectorworks really, really well. So let's go for it in a second. Once this is saved, we'll be importing into Vectorworks. So honestly, uh, Transmuter is an amazing bit of software, very, very reasonable. And if you are doing a lot of 3D work in different kind of CAD or BIM softwares, it's definitely something that you should have in your armory of tools. It converts a really wide range of file types, uh, FBX, OBJ, 3D Studio, and a few other file formats as well. And because SketchUp is such a well-known and commonly used file format, um, obviously it does a great job at transmuting all of those files into SketchUp with the polygon reduction capability as well. Okay, so our file is exported. Now we can go over to Vectorworks and we can simply drop down to import SketchUp file, select the native SKP file, and note the file size is a bit smaller after transmuting because I did a bit of polygon simplification as well. So I have to wait a few seconds and basically the file format will import. Make sure that you create some Renderworks textures um, as you do import the SketchUp file into Vectorworks and then just click OK and let it do its thing. So within a few moments, you'll see you've got this unbelievable model, um, incredibly detailed model of Minas Tirith uh, from Gondor. You know, if you've watched Lord of the Rings, you will not need any introduction to what this is all about. And if you haven't watched Lord of the Rings, I would definitely encourage you to do so if you like fantasy. Now, a really, really lovely model like this in Vectorworks, um, you know, and you can see it's actually very, very responsive and very, very detailed too. So I really enjoyed, um, you know, just seeing this fantastic sort of uh, epic kind of castle, if you like, in Vectorworks and how Vectorworks could actually handle this extremely well. Okay, so just before we start to use the new AI visualizer in Vectorworks, one thing that you're gonna need to do is just kind of create the scale to be something appropriate. Now, obviously this castle is absolutely massive. Um, so working at one to 50 is not gonna to work too well. So make sure you go up to the scale in Vectorworks and just adjust that. Um, I'm thinking maybe uh, one to a thousand scale. And then basically I can now go in and select the uh, basic AI visualizer and start giving it some prompts. 
So, uh, excuse my spelling mistakes, or at least it picks up uh, what it thinks is spelling mistakes. And you'll notice that I'm just typing in a few prompts up into the top bar. Um, I'm increasing creativity a little bit, and we're going to click generate and just see what comes out. So, within a few moments, uh, the AI visualizer in Vectorwitz 2024, the latest release, will produce a very, very nice sketch, in fact. So that's a really kind of interesting concept. What I'm gonna do is just make a little folder and just save these concepts as I go. So I'm pretty happy with this very first concept. So I'm gonna type in some extra prompts, things like add trees around the castle and a lake. I just wanna kind of see what happens really. Um, and I think this is one of the things that you just need to do when you're using prompting software for AI generative imaging, it's just sort of play around with the prompts until you start to kind of get closer to what you're actually looking for. So, you know, this did quite a nice job on the castle. Um, it's definitely a lake there, but it didn't quite give me what I was looking for as well. So what I thought I'd try to do now was basically place a render its camera, get down a bit more at eye level. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to try this, maybe just kind of rotate the view a tiny bit um, and then let's go for it again. So whatever you've got on screen, when you run the AI visualizer, as long as you click the refresh button, this is what it's gonna use, um, along with the prompting and also the uh, level of creativity that you're actually asking the AI visualizer to impose on your image. So as we can see, um, it's done a really quite a nice job now on the castle again. Um, it's done a bit of a weird job on the base. It seems to have placed this on a big mountain and hill. But maybe, you know, I could kind of use that image if I did a bit of Photoshop work to remove it. It did quite a nice job with things like the road and the trees. Um, so some things were successful, but others obviously look a bit ridiculous. So let's see if we can kind of prompt it again with eye level and photorealistic and basically decrease creativity a little bit. I think I'll take it right down and let's click generate. Now do make sure that if you do want to uh, refresh the image, that will basically generate it from scratch again. Okay, so it's done a sort of similar kind of style of base, but a very, very different image on top this time. Um, so let's just sort of keep working with this kind of theme, if you like. Now I haven't clicked refresh yet. I'm basically just working on a theme to see if I can refine this particular image itself. So we'll click generate another time. Let's just have a little look and see what comes out. So um, this is looking a bit more interesting. It's kind of got like the forest and the hills, a bit of a kind of road as well. I mean, it still doesn't quite look right. Um, you know, I'm not gonna be too happy with the overall sort of castle set on that hill, but the castle itself looks cool. And you know, this has definitely got like the trees that I asked it to place as well. So I'm kind of getting closer to what I'm looking for. So one of the things I've found with generative AI is you've just got to spend a little bit of time just playing around with the various sort of prompts until you kind of get somewhere a bit more interesting. Now, here we go. We're starting to get somewhere a little bit more interesting in that it sort of gives a bit more of an appearance of being at eye level. Still looks like it's floating a little bit. We've got that nice road uh, leading up with the trees and it's certainly got a nice sort of sketchy look as well, which I'm quite happy with. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep refining my prompt, keep generating, and let's just see if we can get a little bit closer to the image in my mind I was imagining. And now we're starting to get something that looks a bit more promising. Um, it's not perfect, it still looks like it's ever so slightly floating, but I'm very happy with the background and the foreground of this image. I really like the style. I think it's quite Tolkien-esque in terms of its appearance. And I feel like I'm actually kind of making a bit of progress now. So let's try to prompt it with more realistic style. Um, let's make the cloudy sky and weather and just see what our final images come out like as well. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you have played with AI in other software, it is quite a lot of fun. How useful it is, is a bit debatable at this stage, but clearly it's a technology that's gonna keep developing and advancing and you know it's gonna be pretty incredible. So we're gonna go back into our view and I'm gonna to try to do, uh, put a bit of a base on it this time. So I'm just gonna extrude this base down. Let's just put some grass texture on here. So I'm gonna search for that to where it's grass and just see if this helps. Okay, so I felt like, um, because it was floating in the sky all the time, you know, that wasn't really helping the image. So I'm just gonna take my base and move that down and I'm gonna do a more of an aerial view now. 
So in perspective, I've got this nice aerial view. Let's go for AI Visualizer one more time. Um, just before I do, I'll put in a render as background as well to see what happens. Great. Okay, so I'm uh, happy with my view. Let's click Refresh and let's start generating an image based on this new view to see what comes out. So um, give it a few seconds while it progresses and suddenly I really feel like I've made a bit of progress. It's starting to uh, create the lake around the castle. I've got that nice sort of trees within the, the zone of the castle itself. I've got that cloudy sky I was looking for. Still not perfect, um, so let's remove the lake and see if we can kind of like basically get a bit more sort of trees around instead of the lake itself. So we just let that image refine and suddenly, you know, we've got this slightly distorted view, but a very stylized, almost slightly Van Gogh uh, style of image, which actually, you know, if I was just kind of presenting a bit of a concept and a sketch, I'd be pretty happy with. So I, you know, I really have enjoyed playing around with the AI visualizer. Um, there's lots of other AI generative image softwares and do check out the ones on my channel if you're interested. But, you know, nothing in my view substitutes a good bit of hard work in something like Twin Motion to produce the images you're actually looking for. So what I would say about AI is it's a bit of a shortcut really. You can produce some fun looking images and it's definitely fun to play with. And some of it might be mildly useful, but if you really want to create something in a style that you're looking for, you really need to just jump in, learn the skills and do the hard work. So that's where I can help with my teaching and training and videos. And do check out what I produce in the next video using twin motion of this model. I was blown away by what I produced in a very short space of time. So thanks for watching everybody. See you in the next one. Bye bye.